Hi, my name is Austin Lutz, and I'm an automotive instructor here at Dunwoody College of Technology. And today we're going to talk about our final look at the ignition system as a total complete system, including all major parts. And we're going to walk you through how the system works and what could potentially happen if it doesn't work. Okay. First thing we're going to start off with is the ignition primary side, as this is the control point for the rest of the system. Most major manufacturers are really going to a very small secondary side which completely relies on a solidly working primary side. So there's less diagnosis on the secondary side of a lot of these systems nowadays. The first thing that has to happen is we have to have battery voltage produced at the battery. Without that, nothing else can work. The battery is going to route voltage through the ignition switch to what's called an ignition coil. Now, the important thing at this point, this is where the voltage would split between the primary and the secondary side. Cars nowadays have a lot of control over when that coil is fired. So that is the entire second part of this drawing is the control systems for the primary coil. The first thing that goes to is the ignition module. This controls the switching on and off of the ignition coil. So we're routing from power through these components to ground. Because the ignition module is opening and closing that, that's causing the mutual induction to happen in the ignition coil. What goes into the ignition module for information is from two different sources. The first being a PCM. This is giving us different inputs, coolant temp sensors, air temp sensors, things of that nature, telling the ignition module some operating conditions. The second important part is the signaling device. I drew up here a digital signaling device such as a Hall effect sensor because we have a power feed, we have a ground, and then we have our signal wire coming to the ignition module. A signaling device is not telling it, telling the module when to fire, but what it's telling it is a position of some component, such as a crankshaft. We want to know where that is so we know which cylinder we're firing. The ignition module is going to control that, so we're taking information from the position of the engine combined with operating conditions to determine exactly when we want the coil to fire. Okay? The ignition module takes control of all the timing issues, either advancing or retarding the timing, to make sure we have proper combustion. Once we have all this operating correctly, and we fire the ignition coil by opening the primary and collapsing the magnetic field, causing a spark to be created on the secondary side, we then need to, to deliver that spark through either a wire or a direct connection to a spark plug. The plug is going to be connected through ground through the engine block. That's going to be when you screw the plug in, that's what's connected to the block. We actually fire through the inside or the internal electrode to the external electrode to ground. That's what creates our spark. So when we're diagnosing ignition systems, we can have lots of different problems here that could cause this system to break down. For example, if this ignition switch becomes open, there's no power that can even go to the ignition coil. This can be very easily diagnosed by checking for voltage at this point, at the point that feeds into this module. So we can use our voltmeter to check for available voltage at this point. If we find available voltage at this point, we've confirmed our ignition switch is working properly. The next point that we'd want to look at is, do we have a signal to the ignition module? Once again, we can do this in a multiple different ways. We can probably use a DMM on the Hertz scale to see is it getting a signal to that point. So while cranking the vehicle, it should be turning on and off. We should be seeing a varying amounts of Hertz turning that on and off. If I don't see that, then I need to go and figure out what's going on over on this end of it. If I see a signal there and I have voltage there and I don't have a spark out of here, that means that I have a faulty ignition coil. So what we need to be able to do is to think about how these things work together, and then if they don't, then what is the, our outcome? So if I don't have any type of frequency signal out of the ignition module, then we need to look at a couple different operating conditions. First one we can look at is, is the PCM giving it a signal to tell it to do something? Perhaps the PCM is saying, hey, we're not even turned on right now. So we don't tell this ignition module to fire because it doesn't think that the car is even on. Second thing, we might have a signaling device that's not operating. If the crankshaft is spinning and it's supposed to be telling us where we're at 
and this thing isn't telling, giving a signal, the ignition module doesn't even know it's supposed to fire because it doesn't think the engine's moving. We could have a faulty ground, we could have a faulty power feed, or we could have something going on with this sensor. In the case of a Hall effect sensor, that material could have degraded and the magnet structure inside of that could have broken down. It needs to be replaced. The ignition module, if it's getting a signal from here, it has a good input here, has a solid ground, and it's still not putting a signal out here, then we could have a faulty ignition module. So by understanding how the entire system works, doing varying checks, such as a signal check here, we can check for hertz at this point. We can check for available ground here by connecting a test light or a DMM between power and ground, to check for the faulty ground. We can check our power feed here by using a voltmeter. We can check all these things to determine which component is not working based upon the different sensors that feed that component and what is the input to the component and what is the output from the component and what should be happening to affect this. Another important point is that the only thing on here that is a maintenance type of item is the spark plug. If this gap gets too large and that spark is working hard, it puts stress on the rest of the system, namely the ignition coil. Remember when we talked about in our first video series that this coil needs to be able to put out 40,000 plus volts. Generally, we only need maybe 10 to 15 here, but as that gap widens and gets degraded, then that gap might need 40,000 volts and at some point the ignition coil might not be able to produce that on a regular basis. So that'll give us a problem. That's why we need to replace those at a, specific, a specified maintenance interval based on the manufacturer's recommendations. So as you can see, the ignition system is complicated, but with the skills and knowledge you have, you'll be able to diagnose this simply and easily by looking at all the different components and how they operate as a system. Thanks for watching this video. Again, my name is Austin Lutz. I'm an instructor at Dunwoody College of Technology.